I'm Kent Burke. I'm an attorney at the Scottsdale, Arizona law firm of Burke and Moskowitz. This presentation is regarding Arizona's anti-deficiency statutes and foreclosures. No legal presentation would be complete without a disclaimer. This presentation is for general educational purposes only. It is not intended to be legal advice. If you are facing or pursuing a foreclosure, consult an attorney and do not rely on the information in this slideshow. First, a basic overview of what this presentation will cover. I will cover the basic terminology in foreclosures and the anti-deficiency statutes, what constitutes qualifying property under the anti-deficiency statutes, the two different types of foreclosures that Arizona allows, how the anti-deficiency statutes apply in the two types of foreclosures, and finally, foreclosures involving second loans. Some of the basic terminology, a promissory note is simply the borrower's promise to pay a certain sum of money according to certain terms. A deed of trust is the document that gives the lender the right to have the collateral or the property sold if the borrower fails to pay under the promissory note. Some additional terminology, foreclosure is the process by which the lender has the collateral property sold to satisfy in whole or in part the amount due under the promissory note after a default on the promissory note. Arizona allows two different types of foreclosures. A deficiency is the difference between the amount due on the promissory note and the amount for which the property sells in foreclosure or the fair market value of the property at the time of foreclosure, whichever is greater. Finally, an anti-deficiency statute is the law that in certain circumstances prevents a lender from pursuing the borrower's other assets in the event of a deficiency. It's important to understand some basic concepts uh, before we get to the anti-deficiency statutes. When the anti-deficiency statutes do not apply, uh, the obligations under the promissory note, the debt, and the deed of trust or the collateral are separate which means that the lender's foreclosure on the collateral does not extinguish the debt and therefore the lender may pursue the borrower's other assets unless the sales price or fair market value of the property at the time of foreclosure is equal to or greater than the debt. In other words, unless there is no deficiency. In analyzing any foreclosure, we need to have answers to five key questions to determine whether the borrower is entitled to protection under either of Arizona's anti-deficiency statutes. First, we need to know the size of the land. Second, the type of property. Third, the use of the property. Those three questions determine whether the property is qualifying property under both of Arizona's anti-deficiency statutes. Fourth, the type of foreclosure that the lender is pursuing. And fifth, the type of loan. First, the size of the land. In order to qualify for protection, the property must be 2.5 acres or less. If the property is more than 2.5 acres, it is not qualifying property and the anti-deficiency statutes do not apply. Second, we need to know what type of property is the lender foreclosing on. Arizona's anti-deficiency statutes only apply to one family or two family dwellings, not raw land, commercial, or agricultural property. Third, to determine whether the property is qualifying property, we need to know whether the property is actually used as a dwelling. The anti-deficiency statutes only apply to uh, actual dwellings that are used as dwellings, uh, unlike this incomplete home. Uh, contrary to popular belief, the home does not need to be used or occupied by the owner or borrower. The fourth question is what type of foreclosure is at issue, a trustee sale or judicial foreclosure? Arizona has two types of foreclosures, a non-judicial foreclosure or trustee sale and a judicial foreclosure. A trustee sale is the process by which the lender forecloses without court intervention. The lender simply issues a notice of sale and auctions the property. The lender must first give at least 90 days advance notice of the sale. Typically, trustee sales occur at the courthouse steps. So let's uh, apply Arizona's anti-deficiency statute to a trustee sale. If the property is qualifying property, meaning it's two and a half acres or less, it's a one or two family dwelling actually used as a dwelling by someone. 
then the anti-deficiency statutes apply and the foreclosing lender may not pursue a deficiency. Footnote, the determination of whether the property is qualifying property is likely determined at the time of the trustee sale. Judicial foreclosure is the process where the lender forecloses by filing a lawsuit. It proceeds just like any other court case, but because of the amount of time and cost involved, judicial foreclosure is rarely used. If the lender is foreclosing by judicial foreclosure, then we need to know whether the loan that the lender is foreclosing on is a purchase money loan. A purchase money loan is a loan that was used to acquire the property provided in the deed of trust. There are some unsettled issues in analyzing whether a loan is a purchase money loan. A straight refinance where the borrower does not take any money out probably does qualify as a purchase money loan. On the other hand, a refinance where the borrower does take money out of the refinancing probably does not uh, constitute a purchase money loan, at least to the extent of the money taken out. Finally, a construction loan probably does not qualify as a purchase money loan. In a judicial foreclosure, there are four criteria that must be met. Uh, the property must be two and a half acres or less, a one or two family dwelling actually used as a dwelling by someone. In other words, the property must be qualifying property, just like in a trustee sale. But where a judicial foreclosure is involved, there's a fourth requirement that the loan must be a purchase money loan. If those four criteria are met, then the anti-deficiency statute applies and the foreclosing lender may not pursue a deficiency. Footnote. In the context of a judicial foreclosure, those four criteria are likely analyzed at the time the deed of trust is given. So what about second loans? Basically the same analysis applies. If the second lender forecloses by trustee sale and the property is qualifying property, then the foreclosing lender may not pursue a deficiency. If the second lender forecloses by judicial foreclosure, then it must be qualifying property and a purchase money loan in order for the borrower to be protected. If it's not qualifying property or the loan is not purchase money, then the foreclosing lender may waive the collateral and simply sue on the debt. In summary, in order to qualify for protection under both of Arizona's anti-deficiency statutes, the property must be qualifying property must be two and a half acres or less, a one or two family dwelling actually utilized as a dwelling by someone. If the lender is pursuing a trustee sale, then the type of loan is irrelevant. If the lender is foreclosing by judicial foreclosure, the borrower is only protected if it's qualifying property and it's a purchase money loan. In conclusion, beware, the laws may change. Read the loan documents carefully. It may change the analysis under the anti-deficiency statutes. It's a complicated multi-step analysis that depends on many factors. If you're facing a foreclosure or pursuing a foreclosure, consult an attorney. There are still many unanswered questions under Arizona law. For more information, please go to our website, arizrealestatelaw.com, or you can call our firm, Burke & Moskowitz PC in Scottsdale, Arizona, 480-607-7900, or toll-free, 888-707-2375. Thank you.